What's going on, guys? Vic VP back with another game case, R case video. On this one today, we're talking the SD card and how to set it up. Boom shakalaka! Now, normally I don't really do this. I don't really like selling out SD cards without me personally configuring it. That's what you're going to learn in this video. Anything, hyperspin, uh, Raspberry Pi build. There's no such thing as plug and play. I mean, yes, it's plug and play with some um, tinkering that you have to do. Um, first off, off the bat, I highly suggest number one, you definitely need a keyboard handy uh, for this. It's always good to have a keyboard handy in your house, anywhere, and especially if you're working with the Pi. It doesn't have to be wired, it could be wireless. Um, but again, just first things first, get a keyboard. Basically, what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna guide you on how to set it up and how to set it up to your controls and some other stuff that you'll see that you might need to configure. Um, definitely though, for a track mode, um, you do need a keyboard handy as you have to assign the controls and such. But first things first, let's start with the basics. Let's talk about the SD card, putting it in the Pi and booting it up. So real quick, while we're talking about the SD card, you're literally gonna get this in the mail. Um, I do get this from Amazon. I do get the SD cards from Amazon. It's 128 gig. The Samsung so far are great. They definitely work. You will get this open. Please recognize that I literally have to flash this exact SD card. You'd be surprised that some people go, Vic, it was open. Yes, I open it. I tried you know, to open it nicely. I put the SD card on my computer and then I flash it. Basically, what you're going to get is the SD card and then in it is the micro SD card that goes inside of your Pi. Big thing is to make sure that your Pi is off. You do want it off, make sure it's not on. And you're basically gonna slide the SD card in. All right guys, so basically now we're gonna take the step as you right now putting on the SD card, this is exactly what you're gonna see. First things first, on your actual Raspberry Pi, if you're doing arcade sticks, you should have the arcade sticks plugged in. I personally do not think it matters what USB port you put in. It, to me, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. I always use Zinmo, so it's only one in. Um, but some people do think it should be one, two, three, and then four. Uh, to me, it doesn't matter. But the big thing right now is that you definitely want to have your encoders plugged in. In all honesty, if you are doing, let's say, a TMNT um, or a zero delay encoder where there's like two separate encoders, I highly suggest number one, just to do one encoder. Let's focus on one, which is player one. Only have player one in on the USB. All the other encoders, let's do that later on. Let's first just make sure player one works. So only have one USB in, player one. Basically, when you do boot up, this is the screen you're going to see. Okay. Uh, I'm right now going to configure it to the keyboard, but we're right now going to configure it to you know, your arcade stick. So right now it should really say one gamepad. I don't have a gamepad in it. I only have my keyboard. So on, again, we're doing player one encoder. On player one, you could just hold down any button, button one, button two, it doesn't matter. And when you do, it will literally say what you are, the name of the device. So mine was keyboard. Um, so this part does help if you do want to use a keyboard. Let's say you kind of glitched out and you need help. My, my keyboards will be set up like this. So I'm right now gonna do it on my keyboard. You can follow with your encoder. So basic stuff, D-pad up, down, left, right is your joystick. So you gotta press up on the joystick, down on the joystick, left and right. As you can see for me on a keyboard, I use my arrow key. Start and select is easy. Start is start and select is your coin. On my keyboards, start is one and coin is two, okay? Now some people get kind of sketched out A, B, X, Y. We follow, I follow the Super NES controller layout. I'm gonna flash it on the screen right now this way you can kind of see a big with arcade sticks how I have it set up. Um, so if you see, basically there's three buttons up top, three buttons on the bottom. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six. So button A would be button five. Um, for me on my keyboard, I do the bottom side. I'll take a screenshot of the keyboard, but I basically put, mark it as X. My B on yours would be button four. Mine is going to be Z. X is button two. Mine's going to be S. Y is button one. Mine's going to be A. Left shoulder is L1, so that's going to be usually button three on yours. It's going to be D on mine. And right shoulder is button six. It is C on mine. 
The rest here you can't configure unless you have a 50 button layout. It's, it's not going to work. If you do have an A button layout, I should say, actually, if you have an A button setup, then your left trigger and right trigger is going to be the next two on the right. Um, I kind of confuse myself on that, but I, get, I rarely have people do A button layouts. Honestly, if you are doing A button layouts, you should not be doing a Raspberry Pi. You should be doing a PC. Save and just save your time. Don't waste your time on this. If you're doing A buttons with a Pi, please. It's, it's really stupid. Uh, I don't want to say you're stupid, but that's stupid. A button layouts are for PC games, Street Fighter V, Tekken 7, and all that. So you, Mortal Kombat, those are where you want A button. So right now, if you're running how I normally have my arcade 66 buttons, you might be stuck right now. All you have to do is that you're going to hold down. Let's do button one. You're going to hold down button one. And when you do, it's going to skip it. You literally hold it down. Okay, I'm going to show you real quick. I'm going to hold down. And you see it there. You have to let go of the button, you hold it down again, and you just keep on skipping. So for me, I personally do not like to set up any keyboard commands to this left analog stick, right analog stick. I don't do that. So right now, we're just skipping. Again, if you have six buttons, arcade sticks, you're going to skip. The hot key, you are going to skip. Do not, do not assign that. Skip it. Hold down a key, and good. Now on OK, you should either have to press button A or button B. I can't stress it up, just push it one time. Give it like five seconds. If nothing happens, try the next button, which is either A or B, okay? Which on your sticks is either four and five, okay? Right now it says you didn't choose a hotkey. Is that okay? You're gonna press yes to do A or B on that. As you can see, now we're in it. Perfect, your joystick should work. You should be able to go up and down and such. We are not gonna play games just yet. We are not up to that, okay? We right now, if you right now cannot get up and down to work, you already have an issue, but it should work. Now, just for future reference, if you do have to go back to that menu that we were just doing, configuring inputs, let's say you get a new controller, you want to do a gamepad, your start button, which on my keyboard is button one, will bring up this screen here. Nothing. You should not be touching anything on this besides configure input. If you press either button A or B, again, A is either enter or back, or B is enter or back. You'll figure it out. It's a trial and error kind of thing. Basically, if you press enter, see, I press back. If you press enter on it, it's going to ask you if you want to configure an input, and it'll bring you back to where the controllers were. Okay? But right now, we're not doing that. The next step we have to do is that we're going to go to RetroR. So we're going to go down, and you're going to find RetroPie. We're going to enter into RetroPie. In here, we have a couple of settings. Let me take away my webcam. Okay. The big thing that we want to do right now is that we're going to assign buttons, but such as if you're going to do the hot, uh, uh, load and save states and all that. Okay. We're going to go to retro arc, regular retro arc, not net play, regular retro arc. And you're going to press enter in. I pressed back by accident. You're going to press enter in. Now, this screen is big. A lot of, a lot of details and info go through this screen. Okay. First things first that we are going to do is that we're going to keep going with player one buttons, making sure everything is good. We're going to go down. We're going to go into settings. Again, depending on how it is, it's either A or B buttons uh, four and five. We're not too sure. you got to trial and error. you got to test it. Basically, you're going to go to settings. You're going to go enter. We're going to go into input. Enter. We're going to first make sure that user one binds. Let's do a couple of things. Okay. On this, for you, really, I do already have the setup. If not, you'll already know what it is. Your retro pad should always be your retro pad actually with analog. Always have it with analog. Even if you have arcade sticks, put it with analog. Analog to digital should always say left analog. This kind of is for N64. It thinks that the analog stick is your D-pad. Okay? The device index, this should show your controller name. So if you have the zero delay, it should show it. On my Zinmos, it would show Zinmo. Right now, I don't have a, a controller plugged in. I have a keyboard, so it's considered disabled. Um, the big thing, and we're going to look at it later on, again, we're only focusing on one player right now. On this menu here, where you see B, Y, select, start, up, down, these are the buttons that you configured in that beginning screen, that, that, that first screen. So if you ever, for example, need to see what commands are for the keyboard, 
you could literally see it there. You literally see everything that I put there. This right now looks good. We're going to go back. While we're here, we're going to do some hot key binds. Hot key binds are basically the button combinations if you want to exit the emulator or if you want to save and load state like I have it. The first thing we want to do is we're going to go down and we have to find the enable hot key. Enable hot key should be your select button. On mine, as you see, it is my select button. It's number two. You could change it to whatever you want. If you want, you basically you press A or B. And then it says, push the joypad button that you want to use. So enable hotkeys is one big thing. Exit. Quit retro arc is the second big thing. That's the exit. So on my arcades that you see in my arcades, my four buttons on the faceplate, I have exit, save, load, hotkey. So hotkey is the button you always have to hold down to initiate the quit, save, and load. You want to do quit. This is right now set to start. That's usually what it's always set to. It's always set to start. You want to switch it to something else. If you have its own designated button, that's fine. Before anything on your encoder, make sure player one should have the main button. So player one buttons and also any hotkey buttons you want. Hotkeys are like your load, your save, your exit button. Don't put it on player two. It won't work. So if you're going to do a six button arcade layout, six buttons, coin start that's already eight buttons you need plus the four then you have to make sure that all 12 of those button inputs are only assigned to player one that's the only way it's going to work you must have it as player one keep that in mind now again we have to quit for me i always use my load state and my save state you could assign those anything you want as you could see these are not assigned to a keyboard command well it is but I didn't set it up. So for me, it's F4 and F2. One that I normally do suggest you change is reset game. Uh, change that. Uh, I usually put it to like, um, I put it to like joystick up. Um, basically, if you're in deep gaming, you got to think you see my button right now. That's button one. I'm sorry. That's button four on mine. So you might be playing like Simpsons. And if you tried to put a coin in and you were jumping at the same time, you you reset the game it's a nightmare i highly suggest you change reset game to up which i'll do that real quick on mine so as you can see i changed it to key up awesome the last one you want to check and kind of assign is the menu toggle menu toggle you'll see when we go into nes you should you should assign that um so for me it's the s button usually it's f1 on your on your joysticks or, or arcade sticks I usually set it to button two. Um, it's up to you. Just have that assigned. Once we have that, we're going to go back. We're going to go back. We're going to go back. We're going to go to configuration. And we're going to go to save current configuration. Do not press anything else. Don't go to load. Don't go to save new. Save current configuration. You go back. And then you quit retroar. Right now, the big thing that you want to do right now is let's do some arcade make sure that our buttons work we're going to go back and we're going to go to arcade and remember just like what i always say in my videos street fighter is your key one i'm gonna bring myself back <laughs> so for me on a quick thing you're going to be using the, the your joystick should be working just go up and just do super street fighter always do street fighter to make sure your six buttons work Good. Doesn't matter which one. I'm going into this one. I press back. <laughs> Let it load. Don't touch anything. Let it load. Let it go through its screen. It's going to go and show you this. Let it go. Let it give you the warning. Let it go. Now we could put our coin. Test a coin. Test a coin again just for kicks. Player one star should work. Your joystick should work. So do each one. Don't just spin. Right. Down left up let's select the character as you can see like the button i pressed is like the change costume one which i press button four it's usually button one but right now we're going to make sure that our punches are right so your first three your top three should be low punch medium punch and then high punch it's kind of hard to see because we're getting beaten up by the computer 
which normally I do two player, but we didn't set up two player, but it's a okay. Basically, again, you kind of want to at least make sure that your kicks and punches are set separately. Right now, I'm getting my ass kicked. <laughs> so the big thing right now, you are going to want to try button one, two, three, four, five, six. They should be buttons one, two, three should be punches, and they should be three different punches, literally three different anu animations, three different sounds. Okay, and make sure that your left, right, up, and down is working. You have to do it left, right, up, and down. Don't go diagonal. Don't spin the sticks. You just want to make sure it's good. If we have that good so far, awesome, good work. Let's test out the hotkey. Let's do real quick a load and a save state. Um, for me, I don't remember what I did on it, but you're going to hold down your hotkey, whatever button you did for hotkey, and now press the save state button. On the bottom left of the screen where I am right now, right here, there should be yellow wording that says save state. Now, let's press load. Hotkey, press the key that you pushed for load. It should bring you back to where you just saved. So far, so good. Awesome. Let's exit. Hotkey, exit. You should be back to the menu. So far, so good. If you are not good, don't proceed. That's the main thing that you need right now. Now we're going to talk about adding player 2, 3, and 4. Player 2, now make sure... If you are using these zero delay controllers, the encoders that, you know, you have basically two separate USBs, you must make sure that your encoder is wired exactly like player one. It has to be. If your wire, your pin out on, on, if pin three equals button one on player one, it has to be the same. I can't stress it enough. It has to be. Don't even bother asking me. It has to be wired exactly the same. Before you even put in the USB, I highly suggest that you just reboot the Raspberry Pi. So for us, we're going to press start, and you should get this menu. We're going to go to quit, and press enter. We're going to go to quit, and we're going to do shutdown system. Do you really want to shut down? Yes. Let it shut down. Give it like 10 seconds. And now on the Pi, your Raspberry Pi should only show a red light, no green. If you see no green, you're in the clear. Unplug it. Now that you unplugged it, plug in player two encoder. Plug it in. Doesn't matter where, plug it in. Once you're all set, give power back to your Pi. Let it boot. Don't touch anything, just let it boot. Now we're back in the main menu. We're going to go back down with the joystick. Your player one joystick is always the key one. Player one should work. We go to RetroPie, you go enter. And then we're going to go into RetroArc, enter. Enter equals A or B. Now that we're here, we're going to go again into settings. We're going to go into input. And we're going to go to input user to bind. This now, in all honesty, there should be a device here. There should be something labeled. Again, for me, I don't have controllers in. There should be something labeled here. If it is the same exact encoder, all of these should already be assigned. It should look exactly like player one. Okay. Big thing you're going to do is that you're going to change everything accordingly. So retro pad, remember we do player one. You're going to do with analog and then analog left analog. Okay, again, same thing. If you're using the same exact encoders, it should already be set. You shouldn't have to do anything. We go back, we go back, we go back, we go to configurations, we go to save current configuration. Okay, if it's not there, if let's just say you have a second, let's say you have a different encoder, don't even go here. We have to go back into the menu, which I'll show you real quick. Right now, we're going to quit. This is if you didn't see your second player encoder because it's different. You're going to go player one start. You're going to go to configure input. You're going to press yes. And here on this screen, there should, it should say two gamepad. You're going to go to player two and hold down a button. And then go through the menu that we did with player one. For me, I'm not going to do that because I don't have that 
there. Okay, now to test, we're gonna go back. And again, we're gonna load up Arcade. And again, we are gonna load up Street Fighter. So again, we're doing Super Street Fighter. You go into it. Again, same thing, let it load, let it go through its thing. And now what you're going to do is that you're going to do player one coin and now do player two coin. If you do player two coin on the bottom right of that screen, it should say credit two. Then press player one start. You're going to get into a game. Now press player two start. Player two should show up. And now same thing again. On the main menu, just go through the joysticks, up, down, left, right, and then enter. Player two, same thing, up, down, left, right, enter, get into a game. And don't go into fighting each other just yet, you still have to test. So again, on this here, you're gonna go one by one, and you're gonna press each button to make sure it's a different animation each time. Okay, right now, again, I'm only player one. That's the big thing. Your player one and two should work. Basically, you repeat the steps for player three and four. Once we're done, hotkey, exit. Player one and two should definitely be set now, and we should be good. So now, real quick, I'm going to teach you guys about the resolution if you wanted to do full screen and such. So we need to go back into the main menu, and again, we're going to go into retro arc. So what we're going to do right now is that we are going to go into retro pie. We're going to go into retro arc. While you're here, we're gonna go down into setting. We're gonna go into video. And the only main one you're gonna to touch is the aspect ratio. For provided is basically where it sets it to whatever that game was meant to. Most of the games are with the sidebars as you see right now. Uh, game Boy Advance is like that. Some of them are full screen and such. But if you're like me, I always like to have it at 16 by nine. So basically what I'm doing on the keyboard right now is I'm gonna go right on the joystick right on the joystick, right on the joystick. 16 by nine is a full screen. There are a bunch of different ones. These though are pointless. Don't even go through it. Unless you're doing a arcade one up, I think it's a three by two you should set it to. I don't fully know. I usually always like to do 16 by nine. Once you have this set, we're gonna go back. Real quick while we're here, you can go into audio. I personally set this up all the time. Audio level decibels. Full blast, up to 12. Audio mixer level, same thing, up to 12. And I always set the resampler quality to highest. We're gonna go back. We're gonna go back. We're gonna go to configurations. We're gonna go into save current configuration. Now, almost all the systems now will be in full screen and loud, okay? We can test it real quick. We're gonna go to quit RetroArc. Let's go and load up again some Street Fighter. I press enter by accident. <laughs> so again, same thing, we're gonna go up to Arcade. And same thing, we're going to Street Fighter. The one system I know that it doesn't change is the NES, which I'll show you the steps on how to change that. But again, first, let's go slow. So right now, I can already tell that this is already full screen. Again, full screen stretch, there you go. Basically, when you load an actual game, there's no black bars on the side. You will see the difference if it's pixelated or not. That is your call and if you want it. If you want to revert back, you literally do the steps to go back, retro arc and stuff, okay? We're gonna exit out. All right, guys, so real quick right now, this is a step that must be done. We need to configure the NES controls. Um, you do need a keyboard for this, unfortunately, definitely. So what you're gonna do right now, we're gonna go into the NES, you can pick any game, but you definitely need a keyboard for this, okay? We're gonna let the game load, and you do want a keyboard that has the F key. 
So right now you could try it. Uh, either some, either your buttons will work or it won't. But the only issue that you're gonna have is that getting into the retro arc menu settings, you're not gonna be able to do it. You're gonna need a keyboard. On this here with the keyboard, you need to press F1. Once you're inside, we're in the clear, we're gonna do a couple of things. So the first things first, that we're right now inside of this quick menu, we're gonna go back. And now we're gonna go down to setting. We're gonna go down to input. We're gonna go down into input hotkey binds. And basically we have to set up the hotkey binds like we did before. So set up your load, set up your save, set up your quit, set up your enable hotkey and set up the menu toggle. So as you can see, even though your controller is set up for the other games, this specific emulator is not set, okay? You do need a keyboard for this. Once you have that set, we're gonna go back. We're gonna do player one. Player one is not, it might be set, it might not be set. Um, I could tell right now it's not set for me. My A and B is set but like my start and select is not. So again, it might work for you, it might not, but this again, same thing, you're gonna go with this. Uh, input device, same thing, retro pad with analog, left analog, your device should be here. And go one by one and reassign it. Don't do um, bind all or bind default all, it, it gets kind of nauseating. Um, I'm just the type of person where I definitely suggest you just go one by one. Just to make sure that that button's pressed right, just go one by one. In all honesty, it should be A, B. You could assign the turbo too. Um, you know, it's basically, you could hold it down and it, it'll either continuously jump. But all these you don't have to assign and type. So once you do user one, you definitely want to do user two. There's no three and four. So definitely set up players one and two, okay? Uh, next, we're going to go back. And we're going to go into the video. Uh, while we're in video, we're going to do the same thing. We go to aspect ratio. And you can basically now assign it to whichever aspect ratio you want. We're going to go back. And the last thing we're going to do is that we're going to do the audio. We're going to go down to our audio volume. We're going to do it again, set it to 12, which is the max. We're going to go to the next one. Set it to 12. And change the lower to highest. Once you got that, you go back, we go back, configurations, save current configuration. Now, once you get that, you could actually hotkey and drop the menu, or we could just quit RetroArch. It's going to bring us back. Now, if you want real quick, you could go back into the game and then make sure all of your hotkeys and all of the buttons and such work. Keep in mind, remember NES and the Super NES, for example, here, you had to press like the start button, not button A, you had to press start. So give it a try. If you do want to try actually a good game to try both buttons is like, you know, try to look for a Street Fighter or a Mario. And we're going to exit out. That's honestly most of, um, as far as control wise, that's the most of it. Real quick, I'll show you guys the thing that I do for the uh, N64. The N64, again, on the Raspberry Pi, it's not perfect, but there's a couple things you could do to try to make it perfect. Um, basically, um, when you enter in, if you pick a game and you press enter, if you keep pressing the A button, you'll see it on the bottom left, if you keep pressing the A button, it will actually bring up... It would actually bring up a, like, um, a menu like this. And in this menu... What you could do is that you could change the default emulator. Um, and you could test these. Uh, I believe for me, it was always um, Moopin 64 Plus that worked good. Um, and honestly, with that one, I believe it's that one. We're going to do it real quick. With that one, it's going to um, launch your settings like you have set in RetroArch. So I usually do suggest that. And if it's not that one, then you could always try, um, you know, the other emulators on it. And it is that one, Moopin is that one. So if you want to try that, something to go with. Um, also, some people do say, I mean, I never had the time to sit down and really, really, really do it. 
right now, like you let that screen go, let that N64 controller go and then press A and you'll get this. I've done some research. Some people do say that if you do change the default video mode, depending on like which one you pick, um, you know, as you can see here, there's a lot like you could test. Depending on which one you pick, it actually is good and it actually makes the N64 workable. I've played with most of them and I, I've just given up on that. So that's N64. We're all set on that. So now with those steps, you should be a okay. The game should be playable and such. The next thing that we're going to do right now is that we're going to go into a little bit more details. We're going to go into the attract mode and we're going to set up attract mode settings. Um, so what us, what we have to do to get into attract mode is that we go into retro pie, we press enter. And at the top, there's a thing there for attract mode. Press enter and we're going to let it launch. So now with this though, when we do a track mode, you do definitely need a keyboard handy um, to assign the controls within a track mode. So you definitely need a keyboard for this uh, 100%. You might actually be stuck um, going into this without a keyboard, meaning your arcade buttons are not set. It won't be readable. We need a keyboard for this. Just like I said in the beginning of the video, I highly suggest invest 10 to 15 dollars on a bs keyboard and just be sure that it has the f keys on it so again a track mode is the one i always give out with my, the nes killer it just looks good it's great you know it's a, it's an amazing feature once we're inside a track mode like this as you can see we're in a track mode your joysticks might work but um pressing like enter or pressing button one might not so with this on your keyboard you have to press tab while we're in tab, we're gonna do a couple of things. I personally always set it up real quick. We're gonna go with the screensaver and we're gonna change, number one, the blank screen time. You're gonna press enter and you're gonna erase, put the number zero and press enter. Basically, the screen will never turn off. That originally was set to after 120 seconds, the screen goes off, we're putting it to zero. This way, attract mode is forever. The screensaver is really what attract mode is. We're gonna press enter. You can set this to whatever time you want. I usually like to set it to 45 seconds. After 45 seconds of no touching the keyboard, it will go into a track mode. But right now, I'll set you real quick. I'll show you what I mean, what it looks like. I'll just set it to 10 seconds just for video purposes, just to see what it looks like. So I'm right now going to go into like arcade. I'm going to go into this. And right now, I'm going to leave the system alone for 10 seconds. Really, again, you can set it to whatever you want. And basically right now, this is not a track mode. This is like you picking a game. And again, I have it after 10, this is a track mode. So whatever time frame you wanna set this to launch this, you could do whatever. I usually do 45 seconds, but that's a track mode where it kind of cycles through the game. I'm gonna go back into tab and I, again, I'm gonna fix it to be 45 seconds. Awesome. We're gonna go back, pressing escape, and now we have to set up the controls, okay? Whatever you feel comfortable with, you go in, we're gonna do the back one first. You're gonna add input. Some of them are there, leave those there. Again, if your joystick doesn't work or if you wanna do your own custom buttons, do it. Press add input and now press whatever button you want. Normally I press for the back button is button two. Top row, second button as back. You go back, and you're gonna be using the keyboard for this, you have to press enter, pressing enter on it. You can go up, and again, if your keyboard, your joystick didn't work, add the input, press up, go back. Up, down, left, right, do all that. So again, you go left, you'll add the input, go back. Select. Select for me, I usually do button one on the top row for select. Now that you have the back button up, down, left, right set, you should be able to use your joysticks from this point on. We're just going to do a couple more if you want to do it like I set up my, my stuff. The next one we're going to go down to is configure. I set my configure buttons to start one. So you could press that and then press whichever button you want. I usually do start. 
Now, when you do press a button, it might actually say like, hey, this button's already assigned to, and then it'll show it. Overwrite it, because I'm pretty sure it's a garbage one that you didn't even assign to, so just overwrite it. So configure screen is that. Uh, configure is, again, start button. Random button, I've been doing that now. I set that up as button five. So that's second row, second button, button five. The next ones, which a lot of people do like, is the previous and next letter. So for me, I usually do um, previous letter is button three. So same thing, you go here, add the input, do button three. This is what I was talking about. If you wanted to do like overwrite, you could press yes. And then the next one is next letter, which I use as button six. That is it. Your attract mode is now set. To exit out of this, you could press either start or back and then back again, or you might have to press start. Or you can press back. And that is it, honestly. A track mode now is set, everything is set. So a big thing to keep in mind is that when you are playing the system, you do wanna shut it down when you're done playing. Don't just pull the plug, you wanna shut it down. So the way I usually have it set, and it's just the easiest way, is that whatever button you set for back, so for example, like I'm gonna go into a, a menu real quick and I'll pretend like we just played Street Fighter. Now let's say we're done playing this game and we want to go back and shut off the system. You're going to go back. You're going to go back. You're going to go back. And you're going to see this exit attract mode. You go yes. And that is it. Once you see the pie symbol, which I'm behind it, let me blow my screen. Once you see that pie symbol, you are safe to turn off the Raspberry Pi. And now, since you are in a track mode, if you do reboot the Pi, it will boot up into a track mode. That's mostly it, guys. That's really it. I mean, setting up basic controls, as you can see, changing, uh, you know, um, resolutions, uh, fixing a couple buttons, you're all set. The most difficult thing that people do have is that they don't have a keyboard. You do need a keyboard. Make sure you have a keyboard. Uh, but all in all, following these steps, you should be ready to go and gaming in no time. And again, the track mode usually boots up much faster than emulation station. As you can see on the top left of the screen, you'll see a blinking kind of command going. And boom, we're in a track mode. The other last thing you could do, but I normally do this before I send out um, the Raspberry Pis or the SD cards, um, is just to make sure that it's there. Uh, while we are in a track mode, uh, we could go, a track mode is settings. Uh, we could real quickly go into settings and we could change the overclock. You can set it to whatever you want. I usually do the 1550, this way it doesn't get too hot, and set. I really don't know if that's a Pi setting or if that's a setting that's saved in the SD card. So I do kind of urge you to just double check um, to make sure that the overclock is there. That's really it, guys. I mean, you're all set. If you want to see other stuff, I have it like advanced settings, um, such as in-game um, for like uh, MAM. Uh, if you want to do like, let's say, uh, NBA Jam, two-player to four-player, uh, and also like Metal Slug Blood Mode and such. So you'll see that in another video. This one really is you right now getting the SD card set up. Uh, I'll show you something real quick. Uh, it should already be programmed, but just in case you could always double check it. Um, I like to set the Raspberry Pi to max volume, not max max, but um, you know, it's kind of good, especially if you're using like auxiliary, um, like let's say you're doing external speakers that might not be powerful enough or loud enough. Uh, you might want to take this step. The big thing is that we have to get into the command line. So if you are on a um, uh, regular emulation station or if you're in a track mode, which you'll see either later on or before whenever I put this, uh, basically, if you're, on a, if you're on emulation station, you press player one start, you go to quit, and then you go to quit emulation station, and you press yes. If you're in a track mode, just go back, go back, and you'll see that we have this regular pie thing here. Uh, basically, with the keyboard, you do need a keyboard for this. On that line, you're going to put ALSA Mixer, one line, and then press Enter. 
on here, as you can see, I don't have any, it's not, it's just green. Um, using the up arrow key, I'm gonna bring this up to, till you see the red, right? You see that red? You can even see on the, there's a PCM here, like right underneath the green. Um, I can't, there's no mouse. <laughs> but right underneath the, the, the green zero zero, there's a PCM number 83. Um, I'm gonna set this to about 86. Let's do 87 actually, because you can see on the top left, you see that item number, it says 0.30 on the decibel gain. You don't want to go all the way or else the base, if you have a subwoofer, it sounds awful. Uh, leave it at 87, that's a good number. So now it's gonna be pretty loud um, on your auxiliary inputs and such. Once you're done here, you're gonna just press escape. Right behind me, I'm gonna lower my screen. We have the command line. All you have to put is R-E-B-O-O-T, reboot. Press enter and just let it do its thing. And now with this again, you are basically, the, the volume is gonna be very loud. Um, not very loud, but basically whenever I do my arcade mods, uh, like the arcade one up mods, um, or even on my Z313s, I always bump it up this way. It's just, it's just much louder. It basically will take if you have like a 50 watt uh, system, it'll make it bump it up to like 60. Um, you know, it's not ear piercing loud, but you definitely do hear a difference. So if you are using auxiliary inputs, I do suggest you take that little extra step. That's really it. Literally just guided you guys from start to finish how I do like my bar top builds. And uh, there you guys have it. I hope it was informative. If you have any questions, write it down below. Thank you for watching and enjoy gaming.